In South Carolina, Nancy Mace has delivered a win for Republicans, flipping the first congressional district red. She narrowly unseated Democratic Congressman Joe Cunningham. Mace now becomes the first woman to win the seat and will be South Carolina's first woman in Congress since the late 1980s. She joins a wave of freshman Republican women in the House. A total of 23 Republican women have been elected in 2020. Just just too shy of the record. May celebrated her victory outside a Waffle House in Landon, South Carolina, Wednesday. I'm deeply humbled uh, that the voters of South Carolina's first congressional district had the faith, the trust, and the confidence in us uh, and in me to, to lead the Low Country from here forward. My job starts today. Congresswoman-elect Nancy Mace joins me now from Charleston. Congratulations, Congresswoman-elect. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for having me. So as we mentioned, you will be making history as the first woman ever to represent your district in the United States Congress. You also right. made history in 1999 when you became the first woman to graduate from the Citadel right. Corps of Cadets. This week, you celebrated your election win at a Waffle House. Why? Well, when I was 17 and in high school, I actually dropped out of I dropped out of high school at the age of 17, and my very first job at that time in my life was as a waitress at that very same Waffle House in a small town in South Carolina. A year later, I'd get my high school diploma and go, would go on to become the first woman to graduate from the Citadel, the Military College of South Carolina. And my life is really the definition of the American dream. It's a, a life of second chances. And if you have a dream, you set a goal, and you work hard, you can achieve anything here in the United States of America. I'm living proof of that. And I will also add, want to add one more thing, is that I'm, I'm also the first Republican woman elected to Congress from South Carolina. So it's not just Democrat women who are breaking barriers. Republican women this election cycle are breaking glass ceilings all across the country, and it's amazing to witness and be part of history. Let me ask you about that. Why do you think now, in this moment in 2020, the times were right for South Carolina and your fellow South Carolinians to send you uh, as a Republican representative to Congress? Well, I think it's about time. If this is 100 years after women's suffrage, and if and if women want to be in office, we want to see more women in office, women have to run. And we saw a record number of Republican women this year, hundreds of women raise their hand and say they wanted to step into the arena. I think a lot of women, too, were inspired by what happened on the Democrat side of the aisle in 2016. Record number of Democrat women ran and won, and we're seeing it on the Republican side. And if we want to have women in office, we've got to run. We've got to raise our, our hand and just get in there, get in the arena, and go for it. Well, last time we spoke on Red and Blue, you shared your personal experience of recovering from the coronavirus. Um, I want to ask, first of all, how are you doing now? Much better today. It took about three months for me to feel recovered from COVID-19. It's such a serious illness. I had chronic fatigue and a few other lingering symptoms for almost three months. And uh, it's a very serious illness, and I want to continue to encourage people to take it seriously, to wear your masks and socially distance uh, so we can continue to keep numbers down. Here in the state of South Carolina, we've done a really good job of, of curbing uh, the hot spots and being able to go back to work, and I want everyone to be able to continue to do so. So I'm really glad we have you for this conversation, particularly at this moment in time in the pandemic, because you come at it from a place of personal experience and one shared, right. unfortunately, by many, many Americans. So the, the nation did just surpass, as you know, its highest daily case count, over 100,000 cases in a day. Right. Uh, I know that um, your campaign uh, focused a lot on your business record because, of course, jobs are incredibly right. important to the people in your district. But I wonder, given your own experience and your own sense of how difficult this virus is, how do you balance public health with the economy? 
Well, I believe that South Carolina could be an example for other states across the country. Our, our numbers for COVID-19 remain one of the lowest in the nation, and we've still been able to reopen many of our businesses and industry. Um, there are guidelines from the state and local government on mask wearing or the number of people that can occupy a restaurant or a building, being socially distant. We've done a really good job of setting the example and ensuring that no matter where you are in our state, that we're practicing safe and healthy measures. Um, we certainly don't want to spread this illness or, or have hot spots. Nursing homes have also been um, very important here in protecting our, our older generations from the disease. And again, South Carolina at the state and local level, we've done a remarkable job, our governor, our, our state lawmakers and our mayors of protecting our people. And, um, and I, I think we would be a great example for other states around the nation, how you can balance health and safety with also getting back to work. Our unemployment rate tonight is 5.1%. It's three points lower than the national average. So we've been able to do it very successfully um, so far, and I'm really proud of the citizens and the residents of South Carolina setting that example for others to follow. So there's been a lot of talk, as you know, of a mask mandate. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that when the government makes those sorts of mandates here in the state of South Carolina, um, we have a lot of rural and agricultural areas. And so the, the rise of COVID-19 has really been happening in, in more populous areas and metropolitan areas. And under South Carolina state law, we have something called home rule, where mayors of cities and towns, municipalities and counties even, can make those decisions about mask wearing and mask mandates. So for instance, Charleston County was a huge hotspot in the state early on and implemented those measures, whereas a more rural county hasn't had to do that because they haven't had, um, they haven't been a hot spot. And so again, the government closest to the people governs best. And that's the way South Carolina has operated and we've done it very successfully. So I wonder what your first priorities as a member of Congress will be. Jobs in the economy right now for everyone is of utmost importance. There are still people that are not unable to go to work uh, because of the shutdown. And so we want to ensure that we get more stimulus. We support small businesses. This district, small businesses are the backbone of all our employers, just about the majority of new jobs created are created by small businesses. So ensure that we provide that kind of support. You know, whether health care is another one. So there's a lot of talk about whether Obamacare will be repealed or not. Both Democrats and Republicans have made health care harder in this country. And so whether or not Obamacare is repealed within the environment and the framework that we have, we've got to work to ensure that we provide better access to higher quality health care at a lower price for every hardworking family and that we ensure those with pre-existing conditions are protected. Um, infrastructure is another big one. There will be an infrastructure pack package in the future worth trillions of dollars. And here along the coast of South Carolina, and especially during COVID-19, a lot of folks are moving down here to this particular congressional district to get out of the big cities where COVID is spreading like wildfire. And so um, we're seeing that as well. And so making sure that we've got the right infrastructure here and then environmental issues. Although this is a Republican district, we care about the environment and offshore drilling. And those are issues, all things that I'm going to be working on when I'm sworn into office. Um, very quickly, before we let you go, you did work with the president on his campaign, and he endorsed you in this race. As you know, he has expressed a lack of faith uh, in the electoral process. He's called for legally cast ballots to stop being counted. I wonder what you make of that. Yeah, I think it's really important that in this particular election year, and I know in the congressional district that I will represent next, we had upwards of 70 to 75 percent turnout. I don't know about other states around the country, but it's really important. And people want to know that their vote was counted and their voices are heard. And that's important in every precinct across the country, is that ensuring the integrity of our elections, that every vote is counted, no matter how long it takes. And so I, we've got to have transparency in the process so that the American people have confidence in the results, no matter what the results will be when it's all said and done. All right. Representative-elect Nancy Mace of South Carolina, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me.